Hi everyone, Dr. Ken here with you again. This is uh, Lesson 7, Part 3. We're going to be looking at harmonics. Uh, this comes from Chapter 20.8 in the textbook, plus some extra stuff that I've added into it. So what are harmonics? Harmonics are things that actually distort your main supply voltage that are uh, and it's created by taking energy from the supply that doesn't follow a sine wave. Let me explain with the diagram we have here. So you can see our what we would call our blue line, our standard sinusoidal shape. You can see nice fundamental shape. But you can see the current. The current from the supply is not following that nice sinusoidal shape. It's got some curves, some dips, it's not balanced, it doesn't cross over at the same times, so it's nowhere near being what we would call a sine wave. The reason this happens is a lot of equipment we use takes energy from the supply in a non-sinusoidal fashion. In other words, it switches on and off, kind of using a type of square wave, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And you can see here, circuit diagram 230 volts 50 hertz here's our load and we've got some kind of electronic switching unit you'll find um, it's mostly what we call MOSFET transistors are you being used to switch the supply on and off it's a solid state switch rather than a mechanical switch that you can see here on the drawing so a switching type control system creates this problem and many devices that we use today use this type of approach to create the low voltages or the extra low voltages that they need. So this switching action of power control systems can generate this additional current frequency and we call that a harmonic. So here's a little example of how it works and why it works. If I took a standard square wave, you can see here on the top, and I just turned it on, you'd get 100% of the supply. But what would happen if I came down to the next one and I switched it on for a short period of time and then off, so I switched it on for a long period of time then off for a short period of time, on for long, off for short. Well, in this particular case, it's about on for 80% of the time. So I would get a higher voltage. I get about 80%. So for example, if this was at 100 volts, I would get 80 volts. This one where I'm switching on and off at 50%, on for half the time, off, on, off, on, off, 50% duty cycle, we call it. Then I would get half the voltage. So again, if I had started with 100 volts, I'm going to get about 50 volts out of it because I'm going to get half. And then finally, on the bottom one here, you can see the duty net cycle is now off for long periods, but on for very short periods. So again, the average is very low. So instead of me getting 100 volts, I'm going to get something closer to 20 volts out of it because I've got a 20% duty cycle. And of course, if I've got it turned off, that's a duty cycle of zero. So I'm going to get no voltage out of it, obviously. So they're switching this square wave on and off at frequencies between 5 and 15 kilohertz, depending on the manufacturer of the power supply. So this can create some real problems because instead of being a nice sine wave, we're actually using a square wave to take energy from the power supply. So why switch mode power supplies? A switch mode power supply, and we obviously often abbreviate it to SMPS, switch mode power supply, is an electronic circuit that converts power using switching devices like transistors that are turned on and off at high frequencies, 5 to 15 kilohertz. And they use some storage components such as inductors and capacitors to smooth out the power supply when the switching device is in its non-conductive state. So when it's in the off state, it uses capacitors and some inductors to store and release energy, therefore giving us a nice smooth DC out. So they can use this high frequency switching of the AC and actually get a nice smooth DC output. 
So switching power supplies have high efficiency. They're widely used in lots of equipment like computers um, and other sensitive equipment, particularly variable speed drives. They do it uh, quite a bit from industrial perspective. So a switch mode power supply is also known as a switching mode power supply, but it's it's the same it's the same deal. So whether they call it a switching mode or a switch mode, same thing. It's switching energy from the supply as a square wave, but actually creating DC from that, which is nice and efficient. But the downside is that square wave way that it's taking energy from the supply. So here you can see our little our sine waves again. I'm just going to turn my pen on. And you can see our fundamental, in this case at 50 hertz, fundamental sine wave. But here is some energy being taken from the supply. It looks like a sine wave. It semi has that shape. But you can see that there are actually three. If we start here, so there's there's one complete wave, two complete waves, three complete waves. A lot of my students um, have a difficulty, you know, seeing how many waves there are within the fundamental. So you can count the tops or the bottoms. Don't count both, just the tops. So in this case, there's one two and three so this particular is the called the third harmonic because there are three waves inside the fundamental so you go so what can well the important thing is to remember that if we have a fundamental of 50 Hertz but we're taking energy from the supply three times faster than it's being provided, then we actually have to add all these instantaneous values together to get what the final wave looks like. So if I'm going to take energy from the supply, I've got to add all of these instantaneous points together to see what the final wave looks like. And the final wave is going to look like that. And that's what we have drawn over here on the right hand side. So here's what the final wave looks like, the orange one, with a harmonic. So the fundamental is at the third harmonic, creating this distortion. You can see it here, distortion, distortion, both in the positive and negative side. So the third harmonic caused by a combination of a fundamental waveform and its third harmonic often causes other magnetic fields in a motor which are sinusoidal but added to distort the fundamental. So this does follow sine wave but because it's three times as fast it distorts the fundamental. And the same with my switch mode power supply I could be doing this kind of thing with my switch mode power supply of course I'm doing it very very fast and I can't draw it that fast but I think you'll get the picture of what I'm trying to achieve here and we would get an average because this is the off here so we're off for a long time and on for a short time the average voltage is going to be through here somewhere so here's my average. So I'm going to get an average voltage much lower than the fundamentals peak voltage. And that's a problem. So here's an example. This time we've got the fifth harmonic. So again, we have our fundamental. But this time I've got five higher frequencies taking energy from the supply. And I end up with this crazy shape over here. So 
it's not too much different from my sine wave. Again, I'll turn my pen on. You can see here the, the, the fundamental is actually kind of through here. So, you know, we've got these distorted bits here, but it's not as bad as the other one. So, a third harmonic caused a heap of distortion. A fifth harmonic caused some distortion, but not as bad. And again, if you're not sure how to work out how many, how many harmonics are in, count the hills or count the valleys, but don't count both. So, one, two, three, four. I got five hills, therefore this is the fifth harmonic. So fifth harmonic distortion caused again by a combination of waveform and fundamental. So we can classify harmonics. Harmonics are grouped into positive, negative, and zero sequence harmonics. So positives, negatives, and zero sequence components. In a motor, positive sequence harmonics produce magnetic fields and currents rotating in the same direction as the fundamental frequency. Negative sequence harmonics develop magnetic fields and currents that rotate in the opposite direction. And zero sequence harmonics don't develop usable torque, but produce additional losses in the machine. So each of the harmonics has their own consequences. So you could have extra positives, you can have negatives that cancel out something that's happening in the fundamental, and you can have zero harmonics which use energy and produce heat, but don't do any usable work. Now, you can see here, there's a little picture of the Daniloquin rice mill. Um, some 20 years ago, I did a little bit of work at Daniloquin rice mill. They were having trouble with some compact switch gear that was overheating. It was getting too hot. And the trouble was, we, we measured the current into the um, motor control centers. We measured the voltages. We had a look at what was going on. We put some chart recorders on it over a few days to have a look and discovered that there was more energy, more current being drawn into the supply than what was being used by all the motor drives. Now, in this particular factory, the, none of the motor drives are particularly big, but there's lots and lots of little ones, and many of them, many of them, are on variable speed drives. And those variable speed drives had not been installed according to AS3000. That requires you to do some important stuff on variable speed drives whenever you install them these days. So this was probably actually before AS3000 required it. So what could we do about it? We had compact switch gear that looked like this. We couldn't change the field wiring. It would have been nice if we could have changed the field wiring, but uh, that was uneconomical. So what we had to do is we had to take out every second motor starter and plug it into a piece of spare buzz bar on the board creating enough room between the switch gear to get rid of the heat. So we couldn't fix the problem but we could find an appropriate way to deal with the problem by switching out the current and doing uh, a different way of yeah, solving the problem. So at the Daniloquin mill, we knew it was eddy currents created by harmonics that was creating the extra heat through the motor starters created by variable speed drives that were on these things. And the only way we could uh, help remedy the problem was to spread the switch gear out so that we could dissipate the heat. But uh, that's all we could do. And that was the economical solution. So here's our table of um, harmonic sequences. Um, F stands for our fundamental. So in this case, our fundamental is 50. 
and we see it as a positive sequence. The second fundamental is negative. The third, remember the third really distorted our wave badly, but it was seen as a zero sequence. The fourth is positive, the fifth is negative, the sixth is zero, and I think you can see the pattern that all the third order harmonics, the third, the sixth, and the ninth are the zero sequence harmonics, and they're the ones that create all the heat and do no work. They create all the heat and do no work. The negative and the positive ones, if they occur, do create a little bit of heat, but they also are attributed to the little bit of work being done by the motor drives. So if you can eliminate third order harmonic and sixth and ninth, you're going to do a much better job of reducing the heat that might be created in cables, switch gear, and those kinds of things. So there's also a thing called um, transient harmonics. So we can have harmonics that are non-repetitive, only occur once every now and again. So here's a spike you can see on A. And um, I'll just get my pen up for you. So I can draw around it. There's the pen. So you can see here the spikes are all positive spikes. So they just happen every now and again. They don't happen on every part of the wave. There are harmonics that just flatten off the top. Again, don't do any work and create heat. Sometimes you can actually also get a harmonic that flattens off the bottom as well as the top, and that's called clipping. And then you've got something that we call notch distortion. So this one over here was positive spike distortion. So positive spike distortion, I'm just driving a, drawing a little plus sign on. Here, it's negative spike distortion. We're getting negative spikes mixed in with a couple of positive spikes. So that's called notch distortion. And again, when something switches on or switches off, often creates this notch distortion. So harmonics can distort the supply waveform. This can cause equipment to break down from heat losses and other effects. Another job I did was the uh, Narendra sewer pump station. And I've got a little diagram here. It was almost exactly like this. We had big 200 kilowatt submersible pumps that would, uh, sewer would come into a tank and then it will be pumped up to a processing station from the substation. Now it's a brand new uh, substation. I had designed the switchboards. I had called for some special use of variable speed drives and you can see here some of the variable speed drives that were used. But high current, high speed variable speed drives and as the water level comes up or the sewage level comes up of course you want your pump to run faster and faster to try and keep the level down. So as the sewer came in through here, if the level got up, then the variable speed drives would ramp up accordingly to then pump the sewer out and maintain a certain level within the pump station. Within a, a couple of weeks of the pump station operating, we started to get some complaints. The Spectrum Management Authority rang up the local council and said the TV reception in that part of Narendra where the pump station had fallen to pieces. So what was happening is the high frequency from our pumping station was getting back into the mains. It was also radiating EMF. And I'm scratching my head and saying, why is this happening? So they sent me out to investigate. As part of the design, I had specified that they had to run shielded cable from the bottoms of these variable speed drives into the pump chambers. These pumps had to have special submersible screened cables, which is required by AS3000. So we checked that, yes, they had the screened cable, but we'd also specified there needed to be ferrite filters on each of the phases. And um, 
The ferrite filters had been supplied, the job had been finished, and in the corner of the switch room, there was a box, and the electricians opened the box up and saw these ferrite filters. They had no idea what they were or where they were to go, so they actually uh, threw them out. Fortunately, by the time I arrived, and I was able to go, well, where are the filters? That's why we're getting all these EMF problems. Here's a picture of the types of ferrite filters that we used. If one of these had been in each of the phases of the motors, then the variable speed high frequencies would not be causing TV interference. So thankfully, they hadn't uh, got all their way to the metal recyclers and we were able to retrieve them and install them onto the outputs of the variable speed drives. And once the filters had been put on, all the harmonics disappeared. So these particular filters were, in this particular case, were tuned to the fifth order harmonics and uh, eliminated all that TV interference and everybody's TV was up and going again. So variable speed drives create some, um, some real problems and we get this non-repetitive transient problems. We also get notch distortion if we don't install them properly. So how can we reduce the effects of harmonics? So where harmonics are present in a three-phase power system, we can oversize our cables and our neutrals in particular. So if uh, that's where most of the heat and current comes from is in the neutrals. So we need to oversize the neutrals to handle the additional current. In my case, remember I had to move those compact switch gear out. I, well, I made them higher current rating by putting more air around them. So three phase branch circuits fit separate neutral conductors for each phase is going to help. Transformers can generate su and supplying nonlinear loads are oversized to prevent overheating due to harmonics. And you can also specify transformers that can specially handle harmonics. You can actually buy transformers that have special windings and special filtering screening um, things that are actually built in as part of the windings, some special screens to help filter out harmonics and that's very helpful but you've got to know it's happening and it does increase the cost of your transformers considerably. So this is the end of our lesson on uh, lesson seven part three harmonics. As always I found you some great YouTubes. I found you one on harmonics that runs for about six minutes and I found another one on power factor which runs for about four minutes. So I'll put those on the eLearn facility for you so you can click on the link and have a look at those videos.